There's a saying that perfectly fits some of the games in the MMO genre. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Back when the MMO genre was booming with tons of different games coming out every year, a lot of the games took inspiration from each other. World of Warcraft was essentially copying the groundwork that EverQuest laid. RuneScape could have arguably been inspired by Ultima. I'm sure there are more examples, but I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. If you are a veteran in the MMO, MMO world, then you've probably heard of MapleStory. It was the premier free-to-play 2D side-scrolling platforming MMORPG during its initial launch back in the early 2000s, and still sees an immense amount of success even to this day. Obviously, with all of its success, other games tried to capture that 2D side-scrolling magic that MapleStory reigned in on. Many came and quickly fell into obscurity. Today's subject, Latale, is a game that arguably takes inspiration from MapleStory. I mean, it's even a spin on its name, Maple Story La Tale. Unfortunately, like the others that tried, La Tale has been heavily overshadowed by the juggernaut that is MapleStory. A shame considering for what it has to offer, La Tale is actually a great alternative for those looking for something similar to MapleStory. Developed by South Korean studio Actos Soft, La Tale initially launched all the way back in 2008 in America, originally published by OG Planet. Publishers bounced around a couple times with the game even closing down at points, but ever since 2017, the game has been chugging along pretty stable with its publisher here in the West being Papaya Play. For me, Latale has always been that quirky, underrated MMO that just couldn't stand up to its big brother, with Soul Saver probably being something like their long-distant, forgotten twice removed cousin. Anyways, how does Latale play nowadays and is it worth giving a shot? Well, let's talk about Latale and see if it's worth your time. Latale is a completely free-to-play game and can be downloaded either from Steam or their website at Papaya Play. Once you create your account and install the clients, you can log into the game and create your character. Character creation in Latale is pretty standard for the 2D MMO genre. You can select between male or female, hairstyles, eyes, and various colors. The biggest choice in character creation, however, will be your class choice. Latale over the years has added quite a lot of class choices to the game, with a a total of 13 class choices being available, with even more technically being playable once you advance to the higher level choices in your base class, as well as your subclass. From the main choices you can create in the beginning, there is Warrior, Knight, Wizard, Explorer, Engineer, Soulbreaker, Cardmaster, Wanderer, Monk, Mercenary, Fencer, Lancer, and Traveler. Once you choose your base class, you will choose a name, and then you are placed in a relatively quick tutorial. The tutorial the tutorial teaches you all the basics, such as movement, attacking, interacting with NPCs, and gameplay features. Many of you will probably also learn during the tutorial that the controls, namely the movement, is kinda stiff, even delayed at times. Latail has always had really janky movement. Your character moves in sort of a snap-like fashion, stopping in their tracks as soon as you let go of the movement controls. Basically, characters feel like they really don't have any sort of momentum momentum and just move at whatever speed they are set to. Jumping can feel even worse. Basically, when you jump, you can't influence whatever direction you jumped towards. You are locked into your trajectory. Imagine if in Super Mario you make a jump and you are locked into that jump, not being able to adjust where you land. Latale sort of tries to fix this with its double jump allowing you to fix your direction, sort of, but it's still really bad in terms of controls for movement. Once you complete the tutorial, you then start in the beginning city of Belos, where you can begin picking up quests and leveling up. Now, before we go any further, for anyone who has played Latale, whether they like it or not, they will most likely all universally agree that the soundtrack for Latale is an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> The
There is so many catchy tunes that Letale has that even when I am not playing the game, I have just turned on a song or two and casually listened to them. I mean, seriously, some of these tunes are incredible. Whoever does the composition here needs a raise. The graphics and art style of Letale is nothing to sneeze at either. Obviously, Letale is a 2D game, but the aesthetics are really eye-catching, with tons of bright colors. Character sprites and enemies are also very expressive, having quite a lot of animations and variety. Overall, Letale has a very timeless art style that has held up very well over the years that it has been on the market. Getting back to Letale's early game, when you start in Bellos, you'll see various NPCs, other players, and quite frankly, you'll probably be a little lost at first. The tutorial teaches you all the basics you'll need to know, sure, but when you first begin, you aren't given too much direction unless you start exploring the menus. Clicking the guide button will show you basically everything you need to know when starting out. It will help you find quests, teleport to different locations, give information on progression, explain features, and more. The immediate content loop you'll find yourself doing when you begin is picking up quests and fighting monsters to level up, and that's really about it. I wish I could say this gameplay loop was fun and engaging, but if I'm being brutally honest here, it's really not. You see, a lot of the early game questing is literally your bare-bone quest structures. NPCs that give quests typically give several that you can complete, but I kid you not, nearly every single quest you will do will have you kill X number of enemies or collect a a certain number of dropped loot items from those enemies. There is nearly nothing else that these quests will have you do. Basically, every area you will explore will have you completing several quests that can be done in maybe 15 to 20 minutes to level up, and then you quickly move on. Almost every area you get to following the guide is forgotten as fast as you discover it, since the game doesn't really let you take in and explore any new areas you come across. There is nothing to explore or discover, no interesting points of interest, or mini games to find. Nope, just talk to the quest NPC, brute force your way to completing those quests, and then quickly move on to the next area. It's a bit tragic considering old school Letale had a much slower leveling pace, but at least you got to explore and spend time in any new areas you came across. I will admit though that Letale has an absolute metric ton of areas, dungeons, and content to play around in, so there is no shortage of variety in locations at least. Also, the absolute stellar soundtrack in most areas will also help during the questing slog, so it's not all that bad. Combat in Letale is action-based with various buttons being mapped to quick attacks, heavy attacks, and whatever skills you are able to use as your class. For the most part, you'll almost never use your normal attacks and exclusively use your class's weapon skills, since those will have far more reach and do way more damage. Combat against weaker opponents is just spamming whatever skills you have until everything dies around you. It's not until you get to much higher content dungeons and bossing where combat gets a little more complex. Thankfully, there is some other features in game to help break up the monotony of constant quest grinding and combat. First, let's talk about fishing. Fishing in Letale is mostly a method of making money or getting cosmetic items. There isn't a fishing skill to level up or anything. Instead, you just press the fishing button when you have a rod equipped, and then press it again when the fish icon appears to catch a fish. It's a very, very simple minigame, and the rewards are pretty forgettable, but it's at least something you can do to pass the time. Crafting in Letale has quite a bit of moving parts to it. First, you do have a crafting level that maxes out at 10, which is easily maxed with money earned in-game. Crafting equipment works like any other MMO, where each item requires certain materials that can be acquired either from dungeons or breaking down looted equipment for shards. Enchanting also exists in Letale and works like old school scrolling from MapleStory. Each enchantment requires a puzzle piece to perform and each enchantment can be upgraded further and further with each chance having a certain percentage to fail on the enchantment. If you fail an enchantment, it can break your armor, so choose wisely if you want to keep pushing your enchantment's power. There is also small mini 
games like the quiz, which occasionally pops up that you can participate in to win small prizes, as well as the jump quest challenge style area called Dot Nuri. Letale used to be the MMO in its genre that actually toted a decent PvP system. It had leaderboards, PvP rewards, and seasons, but unfortunately it was removed some time ago. From what I understand, it was removed due to the challenges of balancing all the classes, but it does suck that one of the features that put this game ahead of its competition was removed. I completely understand why though, as balancing is a complete nightmare. Still, it would be nice if PvP was still a feature within the game, especially since the button for PvP still exists in the menu. The guild system in Letale actually has some pretty neat features, and is a great way to find other players in the game, potentially. Each guild has a level that can grow and grant members extra stats, a guild room that you can hang out in, and various quests and social features that encourage members to log in and play every day. Unfortunately, with Letale's relatively low population, there really isn't a lot of guilds to even join up with. When the game had more players, guilds were actively seeking new players all the time to join their ranks. But nowadays, there really is only a handful of them that are actually active. Most players who are actively playing Letale are at endgame doing daily dungeons, weekly challenges, and further progressing their stats and overall account. Progression in general in Letale is pretty long and arduous. You have your initial character level, which maxes at level 235. From here though, you unlock so many additional systems and horizontal progression features that it can make your head spin. Letale has a ton of different systems that increase your overall stats and power. There is monster illustration collecting, item codex, title collecting, achievements, imprinting, enchanting, relics, zodiacs, ascension levels, reputation, pets. There is literally just entirely too many systems for progressing your character. Many of them just provide small stat bonuses, but others can give much bigger perks. So while there is a ton of progression overload, I do appreciate that there is a ton of content you can work towards and complete. I mean, hell, ascension levels go all the way up to 9,999. That freaking blows my mind. Unfortunately, many of these systems are probably never experienced or learned by the average player though. Letale's endgame is pretty darn hard to get to from what I've seen in the first place. If the grindy, slow, boring quest grind won't turn you away before max level, it's all the alternative progression grindings that will. Basically, it becomes a question of how much patience will an average player have. Letale has quite a lot of content to offer compared to other games on the market market, but I fear that its content bloat and superfluous systems probably turn away more potential players than it actually brings in. I think if the game eased players into all these systems in a much smoother way, we'd see more players willing to engage in Letale's content, but as it stands, it can feel really tough to feel like you are getting any closer to reaching the end game. Letale's cash shop nowadays seems way better than it did when the game first came out. Back in the early days of Letale, you could buy cash shop items that increased your stats pretty significantly, that it made you feel incredibly gimped if you didn't have that cash shop gear. Nowadays, a lot of those items have either been removed, or any items that do increase stats are so minuscule compared to the stats you earn from gameplay that it's basically become negligible. I guess you could technically argue that's still pay to win, but at this point, think about it. If you are only getting a small amount of extra stats on top of already ridiculously bloated stats from the game's progression systems, are you really seeing that much of a difference? The cash shop has all of your standard fare we've seen in free-to-play games at this point. They have loot boxes, convenience items, pets, and cosmetics. The prices on items are sort of all over the place though. A full cosmetic outfit can run you about 15 bucks with pets costing upwards of 25. The biggest money sinks are most likely the loot boxes 
pieces you can buy, since those seem to be the most expensive thing I saw. You are rewarded for spending money in the game though, as they have a loyalty system where the more money you spend over time, the more items they throw at you as a bonus for supporting the game, which I can at least appreciate. Latale's community, as I stated before, is relatively small, but like other small MMOs, they are pretty friendly. The problem is that the game doesn't exactly make it easy to interact with other players. Much of the early game is primarily skewed towards solo play, so odds are during your initial leveling up and progression, you aren't going to see many players. The way chat works in Latale still uses this anti-community archaic system, where players have to use a cash shop item to even talk to players around the server. Proximity chat still works, of course, in town, so you can still talk to other players that way, but come on people, almost every other MMO has large zone chats or even world chat that everyone can see. For such a small game, it baffles me that they still restrict world chat to a cash shop item, and players must feel the same way because in the time I played, I rarely ever seen anyone talking in world chat. Really the only way to interact with Latale's community is to join their Discord. Luckily, there is the previously mentioned guild system that you can use to talk to other players, and there used to be player-owned shops you can interact with, but that seems to have been removed for a standard auction house system. Little bit of a bummer to not see player-owned shops anymore littering the streets of the cities, but I do admit, auction houses are just way more convenient. Latale in 2024 is a fine game. It's come a long way since its initial launch, having a ton of content to experience, and surely a massive tower to climb in terms of progression. But I think if I'm being honest here, realistically those who would play a game like Latale are either already playing and enjoying it, or are just playing MapleStory. Referring back to the quote I said at the beginning of the video, I left off the last part of it on purpose. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. Latale is a fine game, even a great one in certain aspects. But sadly, I think in 2024, most people viewing it at a glance will immediately judge it as a poor man's MapleStory. I believe that's a gross misinterpretation of Latale, as it's a game that truly does deserve more players, but realistically, I don't see anything happening anytime soon that will pour in a massive new player base into the game. Many of these older, smaller MMORPGs sadly don't have the budget or care to advertise themselves on a large scale in an effort to grow their player base, and unless MapleStory killed off its own community somehow, I just don't see the tail growing much more than where it is currently. It's always been a small game in the landscape, and sadly, it looks like it's going to stay that way. But for those that do give this little game a chance, I think you'll find that it does have a lot of redeeming qualities, and it is a bit of a diamond in the rough. Let's get to my final thoughts on it. Latale hands down has one of the absolute best soundtracks around in the MMORPG landscape. It has so many catchy beats as well as atmospheric tunes that can really put you in a great mood while playing. Although I do admit some of the songs in the game don't even remotely fit the area they are played in, but with how good the songs are, honestly I don't really care. The game's art style and graphics is nothing short of beautiful. Aesthetically, the game blows its competition out of the water, and it's got some decent character animation and sprites to boot. Gameplay-wise, if you love a game like MapleStory, you are going to enjoy Latale. The 2D platforming gameplay of Latale definitely appeals to players who want a more retro quote-unquote Mario-like game mixed with their MMO. The game has quite a lot of depth and gameplay here. There is a ton of variety in landscapes, content types, and features that you can sink your teeth into if you put the time into discovering it. Lastly, the game, while old, still gets regular content updates with more on the way at the time of this video. So those in fear that are thinking an older MMO like this is in maintenance mode, don't worry, as more content is on the way. Latale's early game loop is kinda rough to get through. Much of your time spent until you hit max level is going to be grinding the same style quests over and over and over again 
again until you finally hit that cap level, only to grind even more into the crazy amount of progression systems. So yeah, it's grindy, and yes, MMORPGs are meant to be grindy, but Letail just doesn't have much of a fun gameplay loop that will keep players hooked on that grind, at least in the beginning when you are playing all by yourself. Speaking of solo, the game just has a really cold and lonely social aspect to it. The game is supposed to be an MMO, but you will rarely ever see people talking or interacting with each other. The game basically forces you to join Discord to talk to other players, but it begs the question, why not just have more social chat functions in your MMO? A more lively chat would give a much more lively impression to new players and could potentially keep them playing. Sadly, like many of my MMO videos, PvP is not present here in Letail. The game used to have it a long time ago, but sadly with the effort to balance all the classes, the developers seem to just remove it altogether, so PvP players will unfortunately have to look elsewhere for their competitive fix. To an extent, one of the major things holding Letail back in my opinion is the game's overall feel and controls. It's really hard to get over the stiffness of character movement, and don't even get me started on getting knocked back or server lag. Finally, it's pretty obvious that the game has a relatively low population. Any players you do run into will probably be veterans who have been playing for a while, and it really shows that new players don't really stick around in Letail. The game sorely needs a better introduction or smoother gameplay hooks to really grab new players and start growing its population. Letail has unfairly been compared to MapleStory for years on end at this point, but honestly, that is the initial impression the game gives, a MapleStory clone. For players who have actually played the game, it's obvious that Letail does enough to set itself apart from MapleStory, but unfortunately, it's stuck, trapped in a never-ending comparison to a much more popular game. For those that are fans of 2D MMORPGs, I can honestly give a recommendation of of Letail. It really is an underrated game in the 2D genre of MMOs in my opinion, if you can get past its shortcomings. Anyways, what are your thoughts? Are you playing Letail? Did watching this video make you want to give it a shot, or did it give you the information you needed to skip it? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to support my content. Follow all my social media in the description below, and I hope to see you all next time.